we're gonna cover a crazy bench press hack that you can use today in the gym to get more swole, and we're gonna start, right? Nah. So when we're looking at bench press, we know immediately the entire goal is that we have to get stronger. And if we can get stronger, then in turn, our muscles will grow because we're gonna have a greater amount of load on the bar. And if we have a greater amount of load on the bar, ideally we would get more reps at a specific weight potentially, and then more reps equals more size. And then that sort of completes that entire cycle where we go back to increasing our strength. And so I like to think about it, get strong. Then when we get strong, we do volume. Then when we do volume, we go back and we start doing more strength work. And we just keep getting this pump and getting strong, getting a pump and getting strong, right? And the best way to think about the bench press is we're just taking the bar off, coming down to our sternum, driving up, keeping our elbows at about 45 degree angle. We don't want them pinned in. We don't want them out at 90 degrees. We want it about 45 degrees to target our pecs and our triceps. So this is some simple stuff. Now, I will say I do like to do a bit more of a neutral grip when I'm doing dumbbell work, but fortunately, because of how our forearms rotate and our wrists, we can still hold those elbows around that 45 degree angle. So that was a quick crash course on bench press technique, along with why you should be getting stronger for your bench press. And that's gonna take us into something very cool that we're gonna cover. In the world of strength and conditioning, post-activation performance enhancement has been something that a lot of coaches and a lot of researchers have discussed for a long period of time. Some coaches refer to this as post-activation potentiation. Some coaches refer to this as post-titanic potentiation. I'm not overly certain what the difference between those three different terms actually is, but that's typically what we're gonna see. And usually this is used as a method to get a greater response from your body. So a good example, my first exposure to post-satanic potentiation or post-activation performance movement would be relative to I first started playing around with eccentric hooks. So eccentric hooks were something that we used back in like 2008, 2009 on a Garage Times video way back. We had the hooks on, we would come down nice and slow, nice and slow, nice and slow, nice and slow, nice and slow. Weight would come off the bar and we would move quickly. Okay, so I'm actually thinking right now, post-activation performance enhancement might actually be something that you do and then you have a longer rest period, so a longer acute rest period versus the post-satanic might be something or post-activation. I think post-satanic might be something that you're doing within the actual set with the hooks. I've got to look into that. Anyway, in this specific paper, okay, so we're going to pull this paper up on the screen. This is post-activation performance enhancement as strategy to improve bench press performance to volitional failure. Now, what does that mean? I think, first of all, volitional failure is essentially like right to that point of when you're not able to execute a rep. Being in research, they have to use these big words like volitional and then put that in front of failure instead of just saying failure. Now, researchers ended up testing 12 people across three specific protocols. Originally, there was 14 people in the test, but two forgot to show up or they didn't want to see how they could get their bench press more swole, so they got removed from the actual study. And what they ended up doing is they tested these individuals in the beginning of the actual research analysis. So they tested them in the beginning, they tested them midway through, and then they tested them again at the end. And test one was an actual max out session, okay? So they did a standardized warm up and they started to max out their bench press. So they said, okay, test one, let's see how big or small our bench press was or is so that we can start to base everything off of this specific number. And so then test two, what they ended up doing was they took 80% of their bench press number. So they took, let's say they bench hundred kilos, 80% would be 80K. And they said, all right, you athletes in this case, Let's see you rep this out for as many reps as possible. And so I wanted to highlight this here too, where we have 14 participants right here. Okay, so they're gonna be about anywhere, around 24 and a half years old. They're gonna weigh around 77 kilos. So what's that, hundred and like 180 pounds, 170 pounds, somewhere in there, depending, plus or minus 12 kilos. So that's a pretty big difference actually. Medium grip bench press. So that's an interesting, so the, their average one rep max was around 101 kilos plus or minus 25. 
I thought that what they could have done better here is define medium grip bench press. They'll say volitional failure, but they don't define what a medium grip bench press is, you know, width between hands. I think that's pretty easy. So then we can go into here, you see 12 completed the experimental protocol. So after a standardized warm up, they do these three sessions. So they do one rep max test for the medium grip bench, okay, right there. And then they're gonna do a control condition consisting of a set of the bench press to volitional failure at 80%. And then comes the experimental conditioning. So this is gonna be the cool part. This is something that you guys can do today to actually improve your overall bench press potentially. So what ends up happening is that these researchers take their max bench. So use the example of 100 kilos. Instead of taking that 80%, they take, in this case, 93% of their one RM. So the post-activation performance enhancement protocol consisted of a heavy set of one rep max with their 93% one RM. So they do a standardized warm-up and they build up to 93% of their one RM. Under this condition, participants perform significantly more repetitions than under the control. So the control, if you remember, they did 80% as many reps as possible. In the post-activation performance enhancement, they build up to 93% of their max, they hit a single, then they drop back down to 80% and then they go to failure. So they actually work up and then they come back down. This is an example of post-activation uh, performance enhancement, but also pretty much an example of drop sets as well. And so participants performed significantly more reps than under the control. Their last repetition was slower and presented a higher velocity loss. So they were probably moving things really, really fast, but then their last rep, they were really just sort of grinding things out because they started to get so fatigued. But because their neural drive was triggered, they were able to execute at a higher degree. And so what do these results suggest? Okay, right here, <laughs> these results suggest that a traditional PAPE protocol improves the number of repetitions performed to volitional failure. That's something that we do inside of our app, Peak Strength. And Peak Strength, we're taking this stuff. These are things that I've learned, you know, that my dad used to have us do. We used to do crazy, crazy drop sets after we would work up to a double or a triple. And this is back in 1999, 2000, 2001, when we were still in high school, when I was still in high school. And now what we're doing is we're seeing science is starting to catch up here and we're putting this inside of our program, Peak Strength. So you guys can go over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, download Peak Strength and then start to get those specific gains that are research backed. Now, a little bit further around this discussion, basically, we have to look at if we're gonna to go to a max, right? Or 90 to 95%, what's going to happen is that our nervous system will get heightened and our body's going to start to recruit more high threshold motor units. So now we have more high threshold motor units that we're pulling from. So in this case, the body is preparing to operate effectively across those specific reps when we're gonna drop down to 80%. Now, another big factor is that this could also potentially be related to the fact that these athletes might have just had a better warm-up okay so they had their standardized warm-up prior to that 80 percent test but also going up to 93 percent maybe they just warmed up a little bit more effectively that's another discussion now in a volume phase what i would recommend is that if we're talking about direct application i would say in a volume phase like exposure phase like comprehension phase again these are phases inside of our app peak strength that you'll see i would use post activation potentiation or post activation performance enhancement for one to two sets of one to two reps so we go let's say two singles and one's at 92 percent one's at 94 one's at 92 one's at 95 and then you could do drop sets and a good way to get more load or more volume would be let's drop down to 80 percent and do two or three sets down there okay so that's another interesting aspect another final key that i wanted to bring up is that oftentimes we'll use pay protocols when we have an individual who's hitting a plateau, they're struggling to get through these sort of points in their training that they're just sort of stagnant, they're a little stale. And so when you have an individual who struggles with a specific plateau, you can get two to three sets at a specific intensity. So again, 87 to 93%, let's say. And then if we need to get more volume because they're, they're a more advanced lifter, we might do some of those drop sets to try and really force some type of specific adaptation and then ultimately 
lead to blasting through that plateau. So, so you gotta check out this paper. This is from July of 23. I think this is a journal of human kinetics and it's just a really, really cool breakdown of post-activation performance. Specifically, this is in the bench press. I do think that this typically will be a little bit more challenging on say a back squat. I don't think you wanna do back squats really too volitional failure unless you're really, really focused on training as like a bodybuilder. But in the realm of sports performance, I think you can go up to a heavy single or heavy double and then do drop sets of five to seven reps. This is a great way to increase a ton of hypertrophy. And one of the other things that I wanted to mention around this paper is that they also cite a lot of other cool papers inside of here. So these are some of those other cool references that you can use to dive a little bit deeper into post-activation performance enhancement. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.